A lot of people think your first activation, you walk out the door, you're good to go, you can hear everything. That is not at all how it works, but I'm gonna explain it. What's up, everybody? That's the sound of the Keurig, finishing up my coffee. But it's Sunday, we came back from church. The girls are still over there at the pastorium, which is where my father-in-law and mother-in-law live, because he's the pastor of the church. But the girls are over there with them, we came back here to let the dogs out so they can do their thing outside, burn off a little bit of energy. And since it's so hot outside, the best thing you could possibly do on a day like today is make a cup of hot coffee. Because what else would you drink on a hot day other than hot coffee? Black coffee. But anyway, let me enjoy this cup of coffee. I'll be right back with you. All right, so last week's vlog, we talked about McKenzie's cochlear implant surgery, which was uh, prep surgery and recovery. This Sunday's vlog, we're gonna talk about the activation. Now, contrary to what many people believe, the first activation is not the last step. That's actually the very beginning of the activation process. A lot of people think your first activation, you walk out the door, you're good to go, you can hear everything. That is not at all how it works, but I'm gonna explain it. All right, for the very first appointment was the, um, Lost my train of thought, hold on. It was the activation. There we go. So we get up to the audiologist in Birmingham. She gets sat down, and at this point, all she has is her implant. She does not have the processor. You don't get that yet until your first activation. So we go in, she gets the, the processor part, make sure the wiring from the magnet to the processor is good, get everything connected, get the, the right magnet piece because there's different magnets for different magnet strengths. So it's like she has the number three. So they get that on. If it doesn't work, new parts have to be ordered. Like the like the ear hook, that's, that's a pretty important part. She was smaller, so her ear hook needed to be smaller. If anything's off, it has to be ordered and all that has to be set up. So once, once everything is put into order and she's sitting there with her processor, we're good to go. Then she gets set up for the activation. So once, once the audiologist is good to go, she's ready to activate. She connects her computer system to McKenzie's processor with a long wire. And while McKenzie's sitting there, she's, she's watching us. She's, she's looking at her family. Uh, all of us that were there, the audiologist was sitting behind her. And the audiologist, that's a hard word, tells us that she's just going to Give, introduce a little bit of sound to her, just the to, just to smallest amount. And then we're just gonna get her reaction. We're gonna be able to tell when she gets it because McKenzie doesn't know when it's coming. So she's sitting there and she set, counts down one, two, three, and just introduces the slightest of sound. And that's when you get that reaction that most of you probably seen on TikTok, it's pinned to the top of our page. That's when she gets that reaction. A lot of you have probably seen YouTube videos, TikTok videos of these kids. And these adults super happy, crying, emotional, so, so happy. Well, some people don't have that reaction. That's, that's like, that's like the TV reaction. You know what I mean? There's also ones, you got to think this, for McKenzie, this was a whole brand new world that she was getting introduced to. She did hear before, but not in this way at all. Most people with cochlear implants do not hear the same way that you and me do. Everybody does explain the sound a little differently. From what they experienced but for Mackenzie uh, like in the beginning she told me that I sounded like uh, uh, like a duck or a robot something like that so this sound to her was brand new it was very different and nothing like she was used to of course she didn't hear for several months after she'd gone completely deaf so this is a whole new thing that's why you got that kind of rough excited scared a lot of different emotions there at one time that that's why she reacted that way. Once we leave the audiologist, they let her go with still a little bit of sound coming through. Not a whole lot. Because if they let they if they let all the sound in at once, good to go, out the door, don't have to come back, that would be completely overwhelming. That would make her probably have a terrible headache, a migraine, might even make her sick. Anyway, we get in the car, ready to go. So she says, I want to hear some music because this child lives for dance and music. That, that is her, that's actually why she wanted to get the implant. We didn't want to get it at first because this, that's a whole different video. But anyway, we're in the car, put on Lauren Daigle's song, which back then was one of her tops. 
we crank it up about as far as it would go. You got the bass blaring. I mean, it was so loud. And she could hear a little bit coming through. She was able to sing along a little bit. I remember, actually, I remember Megan singing the song as it was playing. That way, Mackenzie could kind of keep up to the part of the song it was on. She could hear the music, couldn't really make out the words, but she really enjoyed it because, you know, she put her hands on the speaker, got to experience a little bit of sound with it that time. Uh, what was it that night that she heard Sarah crying for the first time? It was actually at the office. Was that the office? Wherever it was at. I don't know. I'm terrible with my memory and stuff, putting stuff in order. But Sarah was really upset it was feeding time. For so. months and months, mm -hmm. Mackenzie would watch Sarah cry, and she would ask, what does that sound like? What does her crying sound like? And so she'd been waiting for that moment. She It was almost feeding time, and Sarah was getting fussy. This one, she was just, what, a year old? Not Sarah? Even. Just a few months old, and she was crying. It was feeding time. All upset, Mackenzie was watching her. She said, what does that sound? And somebody said, that's Sarah crying. She said, I thought that's what it was. And she would watch. She just watched her cry. As she was, Of course, she was getting her food at this point, but she was just <laughs> so happy that she could finally hear her baby sister cry. She would wait months for that. As bad as that sound. I can't wait to hear you cry. <laughs> you know? she but she would, just, she would wonder, what, is that, what does it sound like when she cries? Of course, any sound was like was that way. What does that sound like? I, I can't remember what something like that sounds like. Okay, next step. For the second appointment, or the first one after the activation, the first mapping. We go in, it's the same scenario. She sits at the table in front of the audiologist. She gets hooked up from her processor to the computer system. At this point, she's very nervous because she remembers exactly what happened last time, but she's thinking she's, thinking she's going to have the same reaction, you know, be overwhelmed with emotions at this point too so she's really nervous but you know she's getting confirmation from everybody we're making her as comfortable as she can and this time there's an extra person in there with her an aide or a, a, a tech we'll just say a tech it's going to help mckenzie with this one because there's a little bit more to it so the, the audiologist is going to start to make her adjustments on her computer and then she tells mckenzie when you hear a sound through your processor you put down a block. They had like a little game. I'm just going to say block because I don't really remember. They say, once you hear a sound, put down a block. So she starts doing her adjustments when Mackenzie hears a little bit of sound. Because she, remember, very, very, very small adjustments. Here's that small adjustment of the small sound. She puts down a block. So we we'll go on with that. And the aide is sitting there helping her through this whole process. After all this was said and done, and she was left on an adjustment and we left. This was actually our biggest question in every appointment was, is she going to be able to hear us talk at this point? And yes, we did know some sign because we had started learning sign long before this point. So and what they told us was before this appointment was over, she's going to be able to hear you talk. You're going to be able to communicate, but that's perfect scenario. Dead quiet room with no background noise, facing each other, very simple words, not, not sentences, very short you know, short, simple, face-to-face, -face, no background noise. We could communicate that way. And like I said, we used some sign to uh, put together with, with her being able to read lips and stuff like that. We could. But still, she can hear very little sound. Each adjustment is very slight, not to overwhelm. All right, so we're outside now. Mia wanted to go out here. She go, She does where she will stand by the door and she'll just wait if she wants to come outside. So I, I brought her out here. She just wants to chew on a stick, one of her favorite hobbies. But anyways, third mapping. Everything's the same. We go up to the audiologist, sit down. And it's her and the tech. They do the same thing with the game and all that. Audiologist is behind them. Uh, move a piece when you hear a sound. She does all that. Still very nervous because, you know, the, after the first activation, her reaction is, you know, so emotional. So she's still nervous, but gets through that. Now, after the after this mapping, her her process is is at the point or at its loudest it's going to be. So it'll be it'll pretty much be at this point for good, uh, minus some tweaks here and there. She still has to go back once a year. But anyways, after this mapping, it's going to be at the point it'll be from now from now on. All right, mapping number four. So the same situation, she goes in, everything's the same, all down to the audiologist in the back. The aide is, is helping her with the game. All that is the same. 
still nervous and everything. You know, she's only six years old, so what would you expect? So at this point, the 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 level or the loudness of the processor is is good. That's where it's going to stay. Now what they're going to start doing is a thing called Ling Six L I N G Six is where they give her different sounds or different words. Let's uh, for instance like snowman or snow cone or something like that. Let's say she's not catching the S, like she doesn't hear the S come through. So she's just hearing no cone. And they adjust that, they, they adjust her uh, electrodes. That way she can pick up the S sound. So they give her these different sounds as well, like uh, like they go ooh or s, you know, different sounds like that. If she's hearing those sounds, just in a different way or not hearing them at all, they have to make all these adjustments. That way she can catch all them sounds. All right, so the fifth and last mapping session. So like I said, the fourth one, they just went through the sounds and everything with the Ling 6 and all that. So after that was done, we're good to go. We hit the road. So what the fifth mapping is, is pretty much just a report. We come back and say, they asked that she had problems with this. Uh, she had problems with hearing this sound or this word or, you know, whatever. Just tell them what, if she's struggling with any, any sound or any word or anything like that, then they hook her back up and they'll adjust and fine tune things that we didn't, I don't know, maybe didn't think about the first time or something like that, or the fourth, for the fourth mapping. But that's it. Then we're good to go. We go on about our business. We don't have to come back for a sixth mapping. Now, uh, now she does go back, like I said earlier, back once a year or goes back if any, if we have any, I don't know, emergency or anything like that, or, or have to go back to get something adjusted or something like that, you know, but that's pretty much it. And that's, that's all of that covers everything. I hope that was Mia, this dog. Oh, this dog. Mia, if I didn't love you. Oh, if I didn't love you, you stubborn dog. But anyways, that's it for this blog. I hope you got all the information that you needed out of that one. But dear family loves you. Jesus loves you. Even Mia loves you. We'll see y'all next time.